Hello everyone. Welcome to Anesthesia Tools. In this edition we are going to discuss advanced cardiac life support. In 2020, the American Heart Association, AHA has released the latest updates on resuscitation guidelines. I hope you are already through with basic life support guidelines in Anesthesia Tools. Now let us go to the ACLS algorithm. Yes, it starts with continuing CPR, that is chest compressions, and ventilation. In advanced life support, you should start oxygen supplementation. The all-important defibrillator comes into action. Attach pads without interrupting CPR and and get ready to check the ECG rhythm. The question is if it is a shockable rhythm, VF or pulseless VT. The non-shockable rhythms being asystole and PEA, the pulseless electrical activity. During basic life support steps, we had a gadget called AED helping us to decide whether the ECG rhythm is shockable or non-shockable. In advanced cardiac life support, we'll be using something called manual defibrillator to evaluate the cardiac rhythm and classify into shockable or non-shockable. Let's keep it very simple. The shockable rhythms are ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia. Non-shockable rhythms are asystole and pulseless electrical activity. When the ECG shows irregular waves with varying morphology and amplitude, no P wave, no QRS complex, no T wave can be seen, we call it ventricular fibrillation. It can be coarse VF or fine VF. Ventricular tachycardia is a broad complex tachycardia originating in the ventricles. Sustained VT may be monomorphic or polymorphic. Tossa de pointus is a specific form of polymorphic VT in the context of QT prolongation where the QRS complexes twist around the isoelectric line. Coming to non-shockable rhythms, first asystole. An isoelectric flat line is interpreted as asystole. However, follow flat line protocol to look for loose or disconnected leads, loss of power to the ECG monitor and low signals gain on the monitor. Eliminate a possible diagnosis of fine VF by checking two leads perpendicular to each other. What is pulseless electrical activity? Whenever you see an organized rhythm, be it look like an SVT, atrial fibrillation, STT changes or whatever and the central pulse is absent, there is no electromechanical coupling and that constitutes pulseless electrical activity. That means whenever you see an organized rhythm, check for central pulse. If pulse is not there, it is pulseless electrical activity. Here we go. Let's us look into the VF pulseless VT limb of ACLS algorithm. Defibrillation is the key intervention. The team member in charge of defibrillator should immediately charge it to 200 joules and clear the victim and give shock. Remember to continue CPR while charging the defibrillator and to resume CPR immediately after shock for another 5 cycles of 30 chest compressions as to 2 rescue breaths. With each minute delay in shock, the survival change reduces significantly. Immediate resumption of chest compressions after shock results in a shorter parashock pause and improves the overall hands-on time. Thus a high chest compression fraction during resuscitation is associated with improved survival from VF cardiac arrest. The team should now prepare for drug administration. The peripheral IV route has been the traditional approach to vascular access for emergency drug and fluid administration during resuscitation. Intraosseous access may be considered when an IV is not successful or feasible. If initial attempts with CPR and defibrillation are not successful, the team should get ready with epinephrine. After two minutes of CPR, if the rhythm remains shockable, that is VF or pulseless VT, proceed with another 200 joules shock, resume CPR, as we did before. Now you can start injection epinephrine 1 mg bolus, 
followed by saline push while CPR is going on and repeat epinephrine every 3 to 5 minutes. The algorithm also recommends to consider advanced airway and capnography from this point onwards. Now, what do we do, if after another 2 minutes of CPR, rhythm remains shockable? It's time to consider antiarrhythmics. The recommended drugs are amiodarone 300 mg push IV or intraosseous and lidocaine 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram IV or intraosseous. So, give the next shock of 200 joules and give the first dose of antiarrhythmic during CPR. If subsequent dose of antiarrhythmics are to be considered, you can repeat half the initial dose. Remember to repeat epinephrine whenever it is due during the resuscitation. The resuscitation team should also identify and treat reversible causes. We shall discuss 5 H's and 5 T's a little while later. At any assessment time, if the rhythm is found to be non-shockable and no signs of return of spontaneous circulation, ROSC, switch to a systole PEA limb of the algorithm. If ROSC is achieved, go to post-cardiac arrest care. Now, let us look into asystole PEA limb or non-shockable rhythm in a CLS algorithm. As a major update in 2020, for cardiac arrest with a non-shockable rhythm, it is reasonable to administer epinephrine as soon as feasible. Data suggests that epinephrine significantly increased ROSC and survival to hospital discharge. It is reasonable for providers to first attempt establishing IV access for drug administration in cardiac arrest. Intraosseous access may be considered if attempts at IV access are unsuccessful or not feasible. The dose of epinephrine remains 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes. The team also considers advanced airway and capnography. After 2 minutes of CPR, if you find an organized rhythm, check for central pulse to identify ROSC. Or, if still pulseless, diagnose PEA. Look for and treat reversible causes. The five H's include hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion or acidosis, hypo, hyperkalemia, and hypothermia. The five T's include tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, toxins, thrombosis of pulmonary or coronary circulation. Continue the steps until ROSC is achieved and then follow post-cardiac arrest care algorithm. Anytime the rhythm changes to VF or pulseless VT, switch to shockable limb of the algorithm. In refractory cardiac arrest, the team should consider appropriateness of continued resuscitation. Before concluding, let us revise the key points to ensure CPR quality. Push hard and fast. That is, compress the chest at least 2 inches or 5 centimeters, at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute. Minimize interruptions in chest compression. Avoid excessive ventilation. Change compressor every two minutes, or sooner if fatigued. If no advanced airway, 30 is to 2 compression ventilation ratio. Use quantitative waveform capnography whenever possible. Yes, we can wind up today's session on advanced cardiac life support. All my dear viewers are requested to go to the authentic literature published in Circulation Journal by American Heart Association on 2020 Advanced Cardiac Life Support Updates. We have lots more to discuss, but in subsequent episodes. Until we meet next time, it's goodbye from Sanish.